Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, I'll show you how you can make a battery with salt water and how you can use it for a science project. The materials you need to do this experiment are available in an official Science Buddies kit. You can find a link to purchase that kit in the description of this video. There, you can also find a link of some additional materials that you'll need to supply at home, like table salt and water. Your objective in this experiment is to explore how different treatments or variables like stirring can affect the output of your battery. You can review the written instructions and background information linked in the description to understand how these variables might affect the battery. Start by measuring 25 grams of table salt with a kitchen scale and add it to 500 milliliters of water. Mix thoroughly with a spoon. This will give you enough solution to make three batteries so you can do three different trials for your experiment. Next, add 150 milliliters of your solution to a glass or plastic cup. The cup should be shorter than your electrodes because this will make it easier to connect the alligator clips. Next, take one copper and one zinc electrode. The copper will be your battery's cathode and the zinc will be your battery's anode. To learn more about what those terms mean and what goes on inside a battery, Check out the background information in the written instructions for the project, which are linked in the video description. You may notice that these electrodes have some corrosion on them, and that's because I've used them for previous projects. If you use these electrodes for something else, like our potato battery project, you can clean them by first soaking them in a mixture of vinegar and salt, and then scrubbing them with sandpaper. Next, take your two electrodes and place them into opposite sides of the cup, and make sure they are not touching. You can secure them to the sides of the cup using the alligator clips. Take the red alligator clip and connect it to the copper, and then the green alligator clip and connect it to the zinc. Note that there is no functional difference between alligator clips with different colors, they just make color coding a circuit easier. So for example, if your kit comes with a black alligator clip instead of a green alligator clip, that is fine, just connect the black one to the zinc. You can now test if your saltwater battery is working by connecting it to the buzzer in your kit. Take the red alligator clip and connect it to the buzzer's positive or red wire, and take your green alligator clip and connect it to the buzzer's black or negative wire. You should hear a buzzing sound. Now you're ready to start taking measurements with a multimeter. If you don't know how to use a multimeter, we have an excellent multimeter tutorial, as always, linked in the description of this video, but we will give you a very brief overview here. Take your multimeter and plug the black probe into the port labeled COM and the red probe into the port labeled V, Omega, that's the capital Greek letter Omega, MA. Then set your multimeter's dial to measure 20 volts DC. Turn your multimeter on. Take the red probe and connect it to the red alligator clip. Take the black probe and connect it to the green alligator clip. This measures your battery's open circuit voltage. The multimeter does not allow any current to flow through it when it's set to measure voltage. So this measures the highest voltage that your battery can produce when it has no load because it is not sending out any current. Record this reading in your data table. Next, we're going to switch the dial over to measure the 200 milliamps direct current range. This effectively short circuits the battery and allows a very large amount of current to flow. So it measures the maximum amount of current the battery can supply. But unlike the voltage, the current reading will not stay steady. It will start to drop rapidly as the battery begins to drain. So you can record the initial reading as quickly as possible when you move to that dial setting and then wait three minutes and record the more stable reading. As I mentioned, you can see how the reading rapidly starts to drop. Once the current reading has stabilized after about three minutes, you're ready to try various treatments to see if you can improve your battery's performance. The first is a mechanical treatment where you simply stir the solution with a straw. Be careful not to knock the electrodes over and make sure you don't bump the electrodes into each other while you're doing this. Try stirring the solution with a straw and watch the current reading on the multimeter. You should see it go back up. Continue stirring for about three minutes and record the highest current reading that you see. It might fluctuate a little bit and that's okay. After three minutes of stirring, switch back to the DC voltage measurement setting on your multimeter and measure the open circuit voltage. 
After you've measured the open circuit voltage, switch back to the DC current reading and wait another five minutes before you continue. When the current reading has stabilized again, you're ready for your next mechanical treatment. Take a straw and blow bubbles near the copper electrode. Again, do this for three minutes, record the highest current reading that you see, then switch back to DC voltage, measure the voltage, then switch back to current, and wait another five minutes before continuing with the next step. Try to do a better job than I did here, and don't blow too hard, or as you can see, some of the liquid may splash out of your cup. After the current reading has stabilized again, now you're ready to try a chemical treatment. Add one teaspoon of 3% hydrogen peroxide to your battery. Immediately stir with a straw to mix it completely, then record the peak current reading, and again, wait three minutes and record the stabilized reading. After waiting three minutes for the reading to stabilize, you will again switch back to the DC voltage measurement setting, record the voltage, then switch back to the 200 milliamp current setting, wait another five minutes for the reading to stabilize, and move on to the next step. After you've waited for the current reading to stabilize a final time, you're ready to try your final treatment, a combination chemical and mechanical treatment. Try continuously stirring your battery now that you've added the hydrogen peroxide. Again, Stir for three minutes, record the initial current, the final current, then switch over to DC voltage and record the open circuit voltage. When you're done, you can turn off your multimeter, disconnect the alligator clips, and disassemble your battery. You can take the electrodes out, pat them dry with a paper towel, and compare their appearance to what you saw at the beginning of the project. Make notes of any change in the appearance in your lab notebook. For complete written instructions for this project, including a material list, step-by-step -step procedure, how to do multiple trials, and analyze the data, see the link to the written instructions in the description of this video. For over a thousand other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.